The Naval Academy Museum presents a history of the Navy in 100 objects. The past several episodes have discussed a period of relative peace in the United States, but also a period of great change both in technologies used by the Navy and in the Navy's processes and training. This period of relative peace stretched from the end of the War of 1812 to the Mexican War, and its developments included the Navy's first steam warship, the Demologos, or Fulton, the formalization of the officer training process in the form of the Naval Academy, and a new type of naval gun that we will cover in a future episode. At the same time, this period saw the Navy reach out around the world to explore and to open lines of commerce and it also began to see the country divide into two. The summation of these various changes meant that the Navy had to adapt and reinvent itself within a relatively short period. By comparison today, it takes decades to move to a new type of fighter or ship. In the Navy just before the outbreak of the Civil War, in less than half a century, essentially the entire method of waging naval warfare for the previous 500 years changed. The changes were not instantaneous, though, and it was through trial and error that we arrived at the next set of rules of naval warfare. No one really knew what tactics to use when steamships fought against each other. Previously, much of the tactical battle had focused on getting in an advantageous position upwind from the other ship, called the weather gauge. Furthermore, the Civil War saw the introduction of the ironclad warship to mainstream naval combat and the first battle between ironclads was a bellwether of things to come. Unbeknownst to most of the Civil War naval combatants, they were helping to establish a set of technologies, rules, and tactics that would remain largely unchanged until World War II and the arrival of the aircraft carrier. The adoption of the steam engine required a lot of fundamental changes, including a rewriting of combat tactics that were now not based off of wind availability and direction. This was a profound mental challenge for strategists to overcome. The shift also provoked a few lesser, unforeseen problems. One side effect of the transition to steam was the noise from the machinery, and this resulted in our object today, the engine order bell and telegraph from the USS Kearsarge. Kearsarge ultimately fought in a famous battle against the CSS Alabama, an encounter that was noteworthy for a variety of reasons, but perhaps most notably for where the battle took place, off the coast of France in 1861. The location of its defeat helps represent some of the fundamental differences between the Union and Confederate navies, and this, along with the introduction to the Navy in the Civil War, will be discussed in our episode next week. So, in light of all the transitions we are discussing, It's fitting that our object today embodies one of the major changes that the Navy went through, the adoption of steam. Perhaps more importantly, the ship which carried this object demonstrates in a very real way the transitional period the U.S. Navy was in, because it was an amalgamation of both sail and steam power. To understand this, we are joined by Dr. Scott Harmon, retired director of the Naval Academy Museum. This time we're going to look a bit at engineering communications, uh, if I may call it that. How do you get orders back and forth on a ship? And the one we're going to look at is from the Civil War. Uh, Things have changed mightily in the last 150 years, but at this time things are still a little bit uh, primitive. We have a model of this Kearsarge, which you can see uh, over here, and Kearsarge is famous for her encounter with the Confederate commerce raider at CSS Alabama. Uh, They met off Cherbourg, France. Now, the Kearsarge and the Alabama were in the transition period ships. They had full sail power. They also had steam engines. And if the ship were under sail power out on the ocean, not using the engines, as was common at this time, uh, the commands would be given by voice very easily. Uh, the same way that had been done for hundreds of years. But with the introduction of engines and the people who are running the engines are below decks and do not have ready access to the voice commands of the captain, uh, you need a different way to do that. 
and the way would be to ring a bell to alert the engineers what you want to do. And we have a bell here from the carousage uh, that was used in the engine room uh, when you want to increase speed, reduce speed, so that the uh, engineering crew would know what to do. We also have an engine revolution counter. Uh, this dial here, it has USS Carousage and uh, windows with uh, numbers in them. This will keep track of the number of times the propeller shaft goes around. Uh, if it's uh, increasing faster, you know you're going faster. If it, uh, the numbers increase more slowly, you know you're going uh, slower. Uh, but the orders would have been given up on the, the uh, bridge or the quarter deck of the ship, relayed down to the engine room using this bell to alert the engineers just what to do. Uh, at the end of the battle, uh, the uh, CSS Alabama was sunk and uh, the USS Kearsarge became famous. Thank you for joining us uh, in these podcasts. We hope that you will visit the United States Naval Academy Museum and see these items in person. Thank you. <laughs>